If you're considering a rhinoplasty, congratulations. You are about to embark upon a transformational journey that should improve your confidence and appearance for the better. But before launching straight into this very important decision, it's important to answer a few critical questions. The good news is that most people are good candidates for rhinoplasty from an anatomic standpoint. This means that virtually every nose can be improved or corrected. However, getting a rhinoplasty requires the ability to set expectations in order to be satisfied with that final result. This is often discussed in depth during the consultation with your surgeon. To be a good candidate for rhinoplasty requires the ability to understand that there may be variations on the final result that are attributable to the given anatomic variations of your particular nose. Just because someone has what one would consider a pretty nose does not mean that this is a possibility for every patient. A rhinoplasty can also be very helpful for people with breathing difficulties resulting from either trauma or other congenital differences such as a deviated septum. To get the absolute best results from a rhinoplasty, you'll need to account for your activities ahead of time in order to allow for proper healing. Fortunately, this is not particularly difficult. For a period of approximately six weeks, activity restrictions will include avoidance of heavy lifting, contact sports, and aggressive exercise. Most individuals can go back to work or school even after the first week when much of the swelling and bruising have subsided. It's also important to strictly stick to the restrictions outlined in the preoperative paperwork. Surgery is performed in a fully accredited, state-of-the-art outpatient surgery center for the vast majority of patients. In select individuals with pre-existing conditions, performing the surgery at an inpatient hospital may be required. For almost every patient, you are allowed to go home the same day. There are a handful of general techniques for rhinoplasty available today. I strictly perform what's called a closed rhinoplasty for nearly all of my patients. This is regardless of whether or not this is your first time with rhinoplasty or if this is a revision rhinoplasty. The power of closed rhinoplasty, often referred to as scarless rhinoplasty, is not necessarily avoiding the scar at the base of the nose. It is in line with the concept of preserving as much of the normal nasal anatomy as possible and only changing the most basic anatomic components to achieve a beautiful result. It is consistent with the concept of preservation rhinoplasty, which is a relatively new approach for providing precision results without disrupting areas of the nose unnecessarily. The days of packing the nose and having an external cast are thankfully in the past. This was often a source of anxiety and discomfort for patients. Several years ago, I have transitioned to simply using tape on the nose without any additional dressings. This has limited the discomfort that patients will have following rhinoplasty. There are rare circumstances where I will use a splint on the top of the nose or silicone sheets inside the nostrils. However, this does not come up frequently. These days, many patients complain less of pain than they do of general discomfort following rhinoplasty. Even with cutting the nasal bones, pain is relatively well tolerated. However, patients will report a sensation of pressure and stretching resulting from swelling. In conjunction with some nasal congestion, this can often be interpreted as pain and can create some anxiety for patients. Luckily, this is only present for the first week and is pretty easily managed. The recovery after rhinoplasty is approximately six weeks in length. This does not mean that you cannot participate in any activities during this time. More specifically, this refers to the avoidance of aggressive exercise, heavy lifting, and contact sports. These activities can sometimes disrupt critical internal stitching or shift bones accidentally. Also, if you rely on wearing glasses, it's important not to wear them on the bridge of the nose during this time. This includes sunglasses. In addition, I often recommend elevating the head when you sleep and avoiding bending over activities. As far as needing somebody to help you recover, luckily it's an easy process and doesn't require much more than perhaps a day or two of assistance. Rhinoplasty is an old, well-established procedure and carries very few risks and complications. Any surgery can carry the risk of bleeding, infection, or anesthesia complications. In addition, there can be potential asymmetry, unusual contours, and in rare cases, worsen breathing mechanics. Ultimately, the biggest risk is the way the nose will ultimately look. It's important to understand that despite excellent technical execution, there can be other challenges to the way the nose heals. Fortunately, the nose 
does ultimately take on an excellent appearance in the vast majority of patients. This is a great question. Complications can happen even on the simplest procedures. In rhinoplasty, true complications are rare, but a contingency plan must be in place. Generally, most complications, such as infection or bleeding, can be handled in the office with a bit of local anesthesia. As long as this does not require a trip to the operating room, most of these procedures do not incur a cost. There is usually a certain time course to the way the nose ultimately looks, depending on where you are along the healing cycle. Early swelling usually goes away after the first week. However, additional swelling may still be present and will go away much slower over time. Often, the top of the nose will lose its swelling first, followed by the middle portion of the nose and finally the tip. Although the top and the middle will typically lose their swelling in the first two to three months, the tip will continue to retain some amount of swelling up to one year or more following surgery. Because of this, it's very important to be patient with the process so that the nose heals appropriately without unnecessary interventions. Sometimes I may recommend a small amount of steroid injection to control for aggressive scar formation in certain patients. This is done in the office at no cost. Every skilled rhinoplasty surgeon will have a large amount of experience and a database of before and after photos spotlighting his or her results. Make sure to check out the physician's website and social media to get a good sense for what type of results are achievable. Often, the results can appear vaguely similar between patients. This is because there are stylistic differences between rhinoplasty surgeons. In our practice, the fundamentals of rhinoplasty are executed precisely within the physiologic restraints of the patient. This means that if someone has has a very thick skin envelope on the nose, it may translate to less definition in the nose than one would potentially like to see. Some surgeons like to demonstrate the intended goal of a rhinoplasty by using photomorphing software. However, there can be no guarantees given based on these image manipulations. The human body is a three-dimensional living thing and can vary widely in the way tissues heal. These critical nuances cannot be reflected in a morphed photo. Ethnic rhinoplasty refers to nasal reshaping with the mindset of maintaining the characteristic ethnic features of a person. The maneuvers are the same as with any rhinoplasty procedure. However, certain features related to things such as dorsal height or tip definition are taken into account depending on a person's ethnicity. For example, an Asian nose typically has a broad base and a relatively flat dorsum or upper portion of the nose. In this particular patient, over refining the tip or significantly elevating the dorsal height may be out of context with a person's ethnic appearance. Ethnic rhinoplasty is performed to provide better definition and proportion to the nose without changing the characteristics. Well, that about wraps up our frequently asked questions on rhinoplasty. If you have any other questions you would like for me to answer, please go ahead and give us a comment or send us a direct message. Otherwise, make sure you like and follow for more important information on rhinoplasty and other procedures in plastic surgery. Thanks for watching.